Good evening, everybody. We're dropping a video a little later than I usually do. It is well past 6 o'clock over here. It'll be 7 by the time this video gets up, pretty much. But I want to talk a l little bit about some news that broke earlier today. And obviously, I'm not trying to, like, break the news because this happened... This happened like nine hours ago at this point, so I'm not really telling anybody anything that they don't already know at this point. You've seen it from dozens of different sources, but uh, the Cardinals made a notable and significant move this morning. They have released wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, and they're taking on the full $22.5 million cap hit this year. There's no post-June 1st designation. So they're just going to go ahead and eat the entire dead cap hit this year. And then next year they can just move towards a hard reset of their cap. So they tried to trade him, but clearly nothing really manifested. Uh, Jeff Howe over here talks about it a little bit. Contract, injury history, suspension, age. You put it all together and you have a player who is not going to be easy to trade. And Hopkins hasn't been super productive the last couple years anyway, so nothing could quite get done. It is a little bit surprising they couldn't scrape together like a sixth-round pick for him. There's got to be some team out there that would be willing to bet on his ability, bet on what he was able to do a few seasons ago as a wide receiver in the NFL, bet on him staying healthy, but uh, no. And he is now a free agent, so we'll see who ends up picking him up, and since I know somebody in the comments is going to say it, this is not me talking about, hey, we should go get DeAndre Hopkins. The Seahawks should not get DeAndre Hopkins, and I would be very happy if I could go through this entire video's comment section in a few days and not see a single comment saying that the Seahawks should go get DeAndre Hopkins. He's old. He hasn't been that good lately. He gets hurt a lot. He was suspended, suspended for steroids recently. He's probably going to want too much money. We don't really have money, and we don't really need another outside receiver. We're pretty decent in that area. It's not our area of biggest concern or even third biggest concern, probably not even fifth biggest concern. So, no, this is not me saying, hey, the Seahawks should go see what's up with him. Now, maybe they should give him his agent a call you want to do your due diligence on everybody. For all we know, he's willing to play for the veteran minimum and just loves Seattle and wants to play here. You got to at least do something, but barring something like that, which is extremely unlikely, no, we're not going to get DeAndre Hopkins, and I don't really want him for all the aforementioned reasons. There were just a lot of red flags there. But this does highlight something that pertains to the Seahawks for this season. So... The Arizona Cardinals get nothing for DeAndre Hopkins. They don't get a player. They don't get picks. They don't even really get immediate cap relief because the dead cap hit is so big. It's like you're you're still going to basically be paying him a ton of money either way. So you literally got nothing out of it. The only thing you get out of it is in the future, your cap is going to be freed up a little bit because you did this now. But in terms of immediate return, nothing. You've just taken a at least still somewhat talented player off your roster, tossed him out there for anybody to go get, and that's really all there is to it. There's no, oh, we're trying to uh, get better, we're trying to get younger, we want to get our younger players out there. I mean, yeah, there is a little bit of that, but the Cardinals are probably going to be able to utilize their younger and more future-intriguing wide receivers with or without Hopkins. So this is just a move to strip down. And the only teams that make moves like this, realistically speaking, moves that deprive you of a at least somewhat decent player for a massive dead cap hit are teams that are just trying to get the upcoming season over with. And I know that's kind of what they said about the Russell Wilson trade last year. Oh, for a team to trade Russell Wilson, they must just be trying to get the season over with and then we've made the playoffs but at least we got something for Russell Wilson. At least we got immediate assets. Cardinals are getting nothing here. And that's kind of a recurring theme of their entire offseason to this point. The Cardinals are getting nothing. You take a look at this depth chart. I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see. You take a look at this depth chart, and it's not like they're completely devoid of good players. But 
we know that some of their good players, guys like Kyler Murray, are not going to be available for some, if not most, if not all, of the 2023 season. And we know that some of their good players are probably hanging on the precipice of being still good in this league. Like Zach Ertz, he's been around a while. What's he going to be able to do at this point? And you also know that some of their best players from last season, some of the rare bright spots on that Cardinals roster last year, are gone. Guys like Zach Allen and J.J. Watt are either, in J.J. Watt's case, retired or on another team. And most of the guys that they have that are new, most of the guys who they have that they're kind of excited about are guys that they drafted. And they did have a pretty good draft, I will say that. They're moving in the right direction, but I don't see a heck of a lot on this team that they signed in free agency a couple months ago. I see guys that they had from before, and I see guys that they drafted, but no real extending of themselves. So... What I mean to say by that is you take a look at this depth chart, you take a look at their roster, and this is a team that clearly is just trying to get the season over with so they can move on to 2024 with a reset cap. Maybe by that point they'll be done with Kyler Murray. We'll have to see. They've obviously cleaned house since they extended him, so the current regime is not really married to him. Um, they'll have more cap space because the dead cap hit that they took on a guy like DeAndre Hopkins will be gone. They'll have some idea if some of the really talented players that they've drafted highly in recent years are worth keeping around or not. Mostly I'm talking about guys like Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins, two guys who they spent first round picks on and we don't really know if they're really good yet. And they'll be able to make more educated decisions. So... We have a team in our division here, and not only do we have one team, we have two teams in this division that are both in the same place, and this is an advantage that does not last forever. These Arizona Cardinals are just kind of playing the season out because they can't forfeit games. They're playing the season out because they need to get it over with so they can start turning the page. Now, they might turn the page and still have some of their current players involved, like Kyler Murray. I imagine there's going to be some kind of determination made on Kyler at the end of this season. But for the most part, they're just trying to prepare for the future. They brought in a new coach in Gannon who is capable of lasting a few years without good results because he's taking over such a bad situation. So he's going to be liberated to gut the team right now and try to figure stuff out later. So we have not just one team in our division that is really trying to just gut things and start over from scratch. We, we actually have two because the Rams might even be in that position to a greater degree. Because like the Cardinals, I'm going to say the same thing of the Rams that I just said of the Cardinals. Who did they bring in in free agency this year that is supposed to dra- drastically improve their season? <clears throat> Who did they add with sums of money? to make the 2023 season good for them. And not only did the Rams not really add anybody in free agency this year, what they lost is even significantly worse than what the Cardinals lost. Like I talked about guys like uh, J.J. Watt and guys like um, um, Allen, Zach Allen, who went to the Broncos, literally maybe their two best players last season. But you've got the Rams... They've lost guys like, well, okay, Odell doesn't really count, but so not even worried about that. But they've lost guys like Leonard Floyd. They've lost guys like Taylor Rapp. They've lost guys like Ashawn Robinson, guys like Greg Gaines. These were key components of a pretty decent defense last year. The guys that they're getting back in 2023 are all guys who were injured last year who are presumably coming back from the injured list, like Aaron Donald, like Matthew Stafford, like Cooper Cup. But other than that, the only new guys who are expected to make any kind of a real impact on the 2023 Rams, they're pretty much, they're rookies. And unlike the Cardinals, they didn't have a Rose draft. They didn't have a really good draft because they didn't have enough picks to have a really good draft. And I don't think they did badly with the picks that they had. They got uh, Hodges Tomlinson, who I like as a slot corner. They got um, uh, Steve Avila, who I do think will be a good player. I, I don't love him, but he is a good player. But you, you take a look at this roster, and there was no real attempt to improve themselves this offseason outside of the draft. Pretty much every move they made was about stripping down 
so they could reset for 2024. So we've got two teams in this division whose priority right now is to reset. They put themselves in a bad position because of all the picks they traded and all the money they spent, and now they're just trying to find a way to hit the reset button, and that involves not spending money on free agents. That involves letting players go. That involves just kind of sitting there and waiting for things to reset. And obviously, strange things can happen. Like, you look at this Rams team, of course, there are still some pretty good players here. Matt Stafford, if he can stay healthy, is still a good quarterback. Cooper Cup is a really good wide receiver if he can stay healthy. Uh, Rob Havenstein is a really good right tackle. They still do have Aaron Donald, who can still do some things. And I'm not saying... Again, I'm not trying to imply that every player on this Rams roster is just bad. That's clearly not the case. But what I am saying here is that pretty much every player on this Rams, with the exception of a guy like an Aaron Donald, especially on their defense, is kind of an unknown. They're interesting in some cases. Like, Kobe Turner, to me, is a very interesting player. Byron Young, got my eye on him a little bit. But we don't really know. The list of sure quality commodities on this Rams defense is basically down to Aaron Donald and nothing else. So to have two teams in your division in that state where they're basically just uh, lit, sitting there waiting for the season to end so they can start flushing things from the old regime, or well, it's not a regime because the Rams didn't fire their guys, but they can start flushing things that don't work anymore and bring in new stuff. That is something the Seahawks team is going to have to take advantage of because this will not last forever. Many, many times in recent NFL history, we have learned that you can turn things around very quickly. So for this one year, these two teams likely not going to put up much of a fight. And you can see in their moves, roster moves, they're not really even trying that hard to put up a fight. Take advantage. See you guys later. See you on Twitch tonight. Go Hawks.